the poorest and most abandoned. Pray for us, Comboni, to see the poorest and most abandoned. In love and in hatred, in life and in death, we follow your way of faith, hope and love. Pray for us, Comboni, to see the Day 7 of the Novena to St. Daniel Comboni We look at the establishments of St. Daniel Comboni. By 1890, the Comboni missionary works were known in Egypt and the Sudan. The missionaries tried so hard to reach Uganda, but because of the British Foreign Office opposition, their attempts did not succeed until 1906. Four years later, in 1910, Bishop Gare, two priests and one brother reached Kobe on the east bank of the Nile, south of the present-day Pakwach, in March that year, and they raised a big cross as a symbol of faith and hope. This milestone marked the beginning of great establishments inspired by Saint and Bishop Daniel Comboni. Yeah. Now, um, internationally, we are uh, in Asia, especially in the Philippines. We are in Hong Kong. We are in Viet Vietnam. Um, in Europe, of course, Daniel Combon was, uh, was from Europe. So we are still present in Italy. We are present in Germany. We are present in Poland. We are present in Portugal. We are present in Spain. And we are present in Ireland and uh, in UK. Um, America, the north, in the northern part of America, we are in the United States and we are in Canada. Then in Latin America, uh, we are in Brazil, we are in Peru, we are uh, in Colombia, we are in Ecuador. Um, yeah, I think those are the countries in the southern part of America where we are. Then um, the African continent. Uh, in the African continent, we are present in South Africa, mm, we are present in Malawi, Zambia, Mozambique, we are in Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Southern Sudan, mm, Sudan, that is the North, North, Northern Sudan, Eritrea, we are in Egypt, then West Africa, you will find the combined mission is in Togo, Ghana, Benin, um, yeah, that's where we are. Now in Uganda, um, the Combon missionaries entered Uganda from the north. From the, that is, they came from uh, uh, Sudan and then entered Uganda in the north. And uh, most of, I would say, the dioceses of the north were established by Combon missionaries or the evangelization in the north was done fundamentally by the combined missionaries at the beginning. Today is another story. We have many congregations in the north, but uh, we have been very much present and we are still present in Arua. We are still present in Nebi. We are present in uh, Guru, uh, Lira. Uh, we are present in Kotido, Moroto. And then come southward, uh, we are present in Jinja. In Jinja we have uh, our seminary. Uh, we are not involved in parishes in Jinja, but we have our seminary there. Then in the Archdiocese of Kampala, we are here. Kasanaluero. And then west, we are in the Archdiocese of Mbarara. That's where we are uh, as far as Uganda is concerned. In 1917, Angal and Nyapea missions were opened, followed by more, thus completing the Komboni presence among the three main ethnic groups of the West Nile, which are Lugbara, Alur, and Madi.
After the first Komboni sisters reached Ngulu in 1918, more Komboni missionaries moved to Kitgum, where the two catechists and today, Uganda martyrs Blessed Daudi Okelo and Jildo Irwa were killed. Later on, Kalongo Mission was opened together with other stations in the region of the Langi, present-day Lira Diocese, reaching the Karamoja region between 1933 and 1955. Pray for us, Komboni. In 1960, the Komboni missionaries established Mbuya Parish in Kampala and the Mission and Vocation Promotion Center in Namugongo. They later expanded to Kasala in Kasanalwero Diocese with the Daniel Komboni College, today run by the Komboni lay missionaries and Katikamu, and later to Kavale Diocese, from where they left in 1990. In 1970, they took up commitments in Hoima Diocese, focusing on missionary and vocational promotion and opening the postulancy in Jinja. Faith, hope, and love. Pray for us. Among other institutions linked to the Komboni missionaries, it is worth mentioning Angal Hospital, radio purchase stations in Gulu and Arua, the major hospital of St. Mary in Lachor, the Center for Spirituality and the Professional Institute Daniel Komboni in Laibi, the Ambrosoli Memorial Hospital in Kalongo, the Katekitiko Center in Lira and Matani Hospital, not forgetting Limoni Medical Center in Mbuya Parish, Kampala. Today, Komboni missionaries in Uganda are more than 103, including three bishops, 70 priests, 16 brothers, and 14 scholastics. Well, uh, because I, I noted that uh, we had okay surprises around, including even uh, um, Bugorobi flats, Chiswa around us. But then, for us, we were out, okay, and we, Zuria, it had it all, so it's the dem uh, demarcations. Chinawataka and what? But then we said, where do we fall? So they told us that, yes, we are in Mbuya Center. So it was just general, Mbuya Center. But then I noted that, that we needed to organize ourselves uh, better than just uh, to be called Mbuya Center, but we don't know each other, we don't know what we can add as a community. I think we started in around 2010, uh, being called Mbuya Center. But then <coughs> I said, but most sub-parishes have a saint, a patron saint. Then we tried to get what, who can be our patron saint. We had several names. In fact, we had, uh, I remember Matthew, then uh, a saint, uh, uh, Uganda matters, I don't remember the name, but in fact, the parish priest had the uh, asked us to secure a, a name from the Uganda matters. But then something, after reflecting more, I noted that we have one great saint who is also the, the originator of the, the, the missionaries who are working here. That is Saint Daniel Komboni. But he's nowhere to be eh, projected, really to invent, to, be, to come out, to be understood clearly by the people. So I tabled it to the, uh, my people. They said, yeah, exactly, that is very good. Let us bring out Daniel Komboni so that even people, the real, other people come to understand it. And uh, one of his catchphrases of uh, using Africans to liberate Africans is one of the astounding statements which I like from him. So I said, okay, Daniel Komboni, lead us. So at first, in fact, we had some resistance from our pastors here that no, it should be a what? St. Daniel Komoni is for the whole parish. But I said, no, 
for the whole parish is, is our head of Africa. Apart from just mentioning that we are Komboni missionaries and what not, we, we, we have not projected St. Dane Komboni. So right alone, I think they, they bought my idea and we started. I am very happy that uh, Mbuya Parish is gifted by the presence of many religious communities that are even in uh, missionary in nature, I would say, okay, the whole church is missionary, but these then understand themselves uh, specifically as missionary congregations. If I am to mention just a few to say, we, ha we are the Komboni missionaries of the heart of Jesus and uh, this parish was entrusted to us to be the agents of evangelization. That is uh, something you know, we are proud of. It is a privilege that we can serve in the, in the, the, as far as we can. And in fact, for us, uh, our lady of Africa, Mbuya, having also our provincial house here is like the, I would say, the face of the Combon missionaries. I don't know whether mine really portrays the face of the Combon missionaries, but I'm there in a way to say to hold the fire burning. Not only us, but we have the Komboni missionary sisters who are also with us here. And uh, as we know, they are the ones who started the Our Lady of Africa kindergarten that has really supported life, has nurtured life uh, in a holistic way. Many people had their journeys start here in the kindergarten, that they learned faith here through the Komboni sisters. They are still here. They also have their provincial house. But then we have also the little sisters, the Macriot Heart of Gulu, of Gulu that uh, they, they, they are here, who took over the kindergarten, uh, a, a missionary in nature, imparting now faith to the young ones. We have the, the missionary sisters, uh, who would say Mary Mother of the Church, who are partly involved in the secondary school and one running our book center here. The Evangelizing Sisters of Mary, who are uh, missionary in nature, also an international community that are running also partly our, uh, our school, St. Chisito Primary School, and uh, also rendering service in the office. So in that way, uh, we have a chance that we bring in different charisms, missionary in nature, to carry out the work of uh, not only pastoral work here, but evangelization in the parish. Apart from the presence of the different congregations that I have partly mentioned, there, there would be others. We have the Focolare community, uh, we have the Sacred Heart Sisters International, and uh, we have the community of the Nunciature. That is also another privilege we have. Of course, the Nunciature is not uh, under us, but the presence of the Nunciature and uh, being part of our parish is also something that we can be proud of. Uh, but then we have uh, institutions that have been put in place by the Komboni missionaries in order to foster this kind of uh, integral evangelization that the whole person has been addressed, not spiritually, but also in a way to empower people for their lives. We have, as I've said, the Our Lady of Africa Kindergarten, which functions uh, really that many people are proud of even that they are, they are former alumni of this place, they will say, I started there, my roots are there. Then we have the schools, we have uh, St. Chisito Primary School, founded by the Komboni missionaries, uh, and then uh, St. Chisito Senior Secondary School, Bugolobi, both intended in a way to offer an environment where children can grow. They can make a journey of education, but also of a spiritual empowerment. And then what uh, person I cannot forget from, as we speak about institutions is uh, the presence of uh, Reach Out uh, Community Health Initiative Mbuya. It was started of course as Reach Out HIV Initiative Mbuya. It uh, wants now to incorporate also other uh, non-communicable diseases but the, the presence of this institution according to me uh, helps us also to live our charism as combined missionaries, that we make common cause with the poorest and the most abundant. And for our time now, those who are infected and affected by the HIV scourge are in a way people who would be at the margins of society. Now that they have a home where they can come and get attention, 
following also the mission of reach out the holistic approach that they don't only get medicines but they are accompanied and then they receive a kind of economic empowerment this is all in a way to say that we are trying to approach mission from different angles in order to offer a kind of an integral an integral empowerment of the human person um while I do what I am supposed to do as a provincial superior, there are a number of things which are of concern, especially um, when I see what is happening in the country. And uh, these things make me feel that there is still a lot to be done. One of the things is the fact that um, many young people have not developed in themselves the desire to work hard. Yes, I acknowledge and I appreciate that there are so many young people like you, people who are working hard. But when I travel around this country, I very often meet very young, able-bodied men you know, sitting in trading centers in the morning playing cards and, uh, uh, and kind of Passing time, doing nothing, no? Do th doing nothing meaningful, that is what I want to say. So there is a lot to be done in as far as um, inculcating in our young people the spirit of hard work is concerned. And that is uh, our homework, among others, as missionaries, that as we do our work of evangelization, it's very important to, to preach the gospel of hard work. And uh, I do believe that um, countries like ours will not develop unless we learn to work hard and to be disciplined as far as work is concerned. So that's one thing. Another thing which I feel is uh, <clears throat> of concern, an area where uh, evangelization is still uh, called for, or, yeah, is um, accountability. I sense uh, that uh, we are developing a culture of lack of accountability, uh, especially in our country here, that um, very few people really uh, live as men and women who are accountable uh, to, to others. No. So uh, I, I do believe that when it comes to evangelization, we still have a lot to do to preach the gospel of accountability <laughs> or the discipline of accountability. I may call it the gospel of accountability, but it's that, that uh, our countries, our societies, our communities here do not have a bright future uh, as long as we continue living in a way uh, which uh, kind of lacks that spirit of accountability. And I do believe that when you speak about corruption and uh, misuse of funds and, uh, and all the mess we see around, it comes to that, uh, that we have not developed a culture of accountability. And it's partly our responsibility as missionaries to, to preach that and to teach that to our people. Yeah. Yeah. We hear more on St. Daniel Comboni's establishments from Father Chiwanuka Achilles Kasozi, the provincial superior of the Comboni missionaries in Uganda. Uh, the number of institutions that we, we have all... Yeah, no, I have to be very, um, very clear as far as this is concerned. Because today, while it is true that... Combined missionaries have founded uh, many institutions, uh, especially in the field of education, the field of health, and others. Uh, many of these institutions have now been given over to the local church and to the local church. So now we have very few institutions which we are practically running as combined missionaries. And some of these few which I can m mention, that we have a secondary school in Casanaruero, St. Daniel Comboni Secondary School. We are running uh, the Daniel Comboni um, Vocational Institute in Laibi, which is a big 
uh, institute uh, training uh, men and young men in a number of fields, electricity, plumbing, uh, motor mechanics and, and others. Um, we also have a technical school uh, still running uh, at Angal in Nebi and um, we have um, also another technical school uh, running in, uh, in Chad Shamhunga in Barara. So, but many others which we started, we have handed them over to the local church and the local churches or all the government, they are running these institutions. Of course, with our support and with our collaboration where we can. Uh, we should be uh, running now about 16 parishes in um, nine different uh, dioceses. Yeah. We have other presences which are not parishes as such, but parishes, as uh, strictly speaking, we have 16 parishes, but uh, spread in nine dioceses. Uh, in the Moroto diocese, we have um, Namalu Parish, we have uh, Kangole Parish, we have Matanyi Parish. In the Kotido Diocese, we have Kanawat Parish. Then come to Lira Diocese, we have Ngeta Parish, we have Icheme, and we have Alenga Parish. Uh, Gulu, the Archdiocese of Gulu, we have Kalongo, we have Opit, and uh, we have Laibi Parish. Um, travel west or northwest. <laughs> uh, Nebi Diocese, we, are, we have only one parish, that is Angal Parish. And then still ahead north, when Arua Diocese, we have Mbachi Parish. Then come southward, Casanaluero. We have only Kasala Parish, which we are still running. Uh, in the Archdiocese of Kampala, we have only uh, Mbuya Parish. Um, then west, uh, the Archdiocese of Mbarara, we have two parishes, that is uh, uh, Chamhunga Parish and uh, Rochere Parish. How many is that? That's 16 parishes. I also request not only the sub-parishioners, but even the parishioners to always reflect on St. Daniel Kombon because he has, he did a, lit, a lot of work. He has done a lot of work in Africa and most particularly from Bia as a parish. To see the poorest and most abandoned